All right, let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit down upon us, helping us to prepare to receive your Spirit in the, in the sacrament of confirmation. May our ears be open, our hearts be open to hear your voice and to respond. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh, all right, so what is happening next week? You are getting confirmed. That is fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's happening, too. <laughs> Daily Mass is also happening. Um, all right, so what day is your confirmation? Wednesday. Wednesday. Everybody know that? No. 23rd. <laughs> Maybe some other year. It'll be on the 26th, but not this year. Deacon Kirk, what time is the Mass at? Yep, Mass is at 6.30. Be here at 545 with your sponsor. So again, we're asking you just to be here early, unlike other parishes, which make you come on a whole different day. We're just going to give you, ask you to come early. So please come early, 5:45, with your sponsor. What would be the appropriate attire for this mass? Sumner. Something very nice. Yes, very nice, appropriate. Not your pajamas. Not your sweatpants, not a cocktail dress, something appropriate. Um, so, appropriate, respectful, um, yeah. So, nice shoes, slacks for guys. Yeah, wear a tie. I might even wear a tie. <laughs> I might even. Um, so, Guys, if you got a tie, sport that. Um, ladies, appropriate dress, or uh, if you don't have that, you can wear something. I don't know what would not be. Natalie, what, what would? I never know the, the lingo for that. What's that? I can only think of dress. Yeah. So like business formal. I don't know. What would? I don't. I don't know. Just something. Wear something nice. <laughs> <laughs> something nice. It's your it's it's your special day, so wear something nice for it. <laughs> All right. Anybody have questions so far? Yes. If your sponsor might not arrive on time, I would hope that they would at least arrive on time in time for mass. If they are not going to arrive on time for 545, then it will be your duty and responsibility to convey to them what they need to do during the Mass. Then you better have a, somebody who can stand in for them. What's that? Are they, gonna do they are going to do, be doing something. They are there 
with you. <laughs> when you present yourself to the archbishop, they will be there with you. Um, they don't say anything. It's all on you. <laughs> so if your sponsor is not going to be there, um, you need to have somebody who can stand in for you, in for you um, that is also Catholic, practicing, confirmed, all that stuff. Though, so they act as the proxy. Sumner, yes? Yep. I I don't know what this archbishop does. It's usually like, I mean, it kind of depends on the bishop or archbishop. If it's um, Eusebio, which it won't be, it'll be Archbishop Achen. Um, but Eusebio would like dunk his hand in the oil and then like smear it all over you. Literally, yeah, just like, that's what he'd do. Just, um, I think Archbishop Achen may be a little bit more reserved. Um, but it'll be okay. Like, if it... It shouldn't run into your eyes, but if it does, you know, just wipe it away, you know, wipe it elsewhere on you. You'll it'll smell good. You'll want it on you. So, <laughs> Janaya. you're asking for a friend. <laughs> yes. Deacon Kirk, would you? Yeah. Does that answer your ask your question for your friend? Okay. <laughs> yes, Jacob. I think so. Deacon Kirk, could your step parent be a sponsor? Yes. Do you have a sponsor yet? Okay. Who does not have their sponsor yet? Deacon Kirk, do you? T, I think, was working on the paperwork. Okay. They need, they, they really need to know that because there's also paperwork involved that needs to get done within the next few days. And make sure that that paperwork is getting to Deacon Kirk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Sumner, did you have your paperwork turned in? Did you? Dang it, it's on me. <laughs> That's right, I think I know who your sponsor is. Like a long time ago. That's, that's really on me then. <laughs> Two H's, two A's, two N's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that would not be a good guess for Wordle. <laughs> I just started playing Wordle today. I see how it's addictive. <laughs> I did. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know what it was, so I looked into it, and then I was like, "Okay." Oh. I mean, there's fun in trying to guess the word. Well, 
I don't need to show off. God knows. <laughs> God knows how smart I am. <laughs> I'll post it to Facebook. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but if it didn't happen on Facebook, it didn't happen at all. <laughs> The ten letter one is hard. I can't think of ten letter words. I don't even know if conf Nope, that's eleven words. Oh, eleven letters. Anyways, okay, Deacon Kurt, do you get everything you need? I think so. And then who else need or do you need No. Stay away from him, he might punch you. What? The heretic. Yeah. You you want some context? So No, well I mean you. Well now you now you have your a saint who punches people protecting you, so um so Saint Nicholas, a little look um bio for him. Um, he's not always a guy dressed in red um, who brought gifts everywhere. Uh, the red was actually brought on by Coca-Cola. Um, so, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like Santa's, the modern day Santa with his red suit was actually, um, that was Coca-Cola's branding is they gave him the red suit. Probably on his jolliness and everything else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe I'm I'm saying Saint Nicholas is real. So Saint Nicholas fought heresy and in one of the um councils he punched the heretic for being a heretic. Um, he might be. <laughs> so, that is St. Nicholas. And his feast day is actually, I think, December 17th. So, not the 25th. <laughs> Janai, does that help you with context for St. Nicholas? <laughs> Anyways, I'll let you decide if the secularized Santa Claus is real or not. But St. Nicholas, the saint, is real. Okay. <laughs> All righty, let's, let's talk about tonight's topic, which is pertinent for next week, because you're getting confirmed next week. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a refresher. Um, I might, I might like pick on one of you one at a time. I might go, should I, should I just go around? All right, let's, let's go around in a circle. Jasper, we'll start with you. What are the seven? And you cannot look at your pieces of paper. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, uh, fidelity, fear of the Lord. Not fidelity. Fortitude, fortitude, fear of the Lord. Uh, uh, counsel, understanding. Of awesome. All right, go for it. Fortitude. <laughs> What's the ac what's the acronym, guys? Okay, the acronym of, is Puffwick, so that helps you out. All right, so okay, yes. So you have K and another F. Perfect. Awesome. Good job. <laughs> All right, let's go.
And one more. Starts with a U. Awesome. Good job. All right. Trust you on that. Otherwise, we might go heretic on you. I think that's it. Yep. Nice. Good job. <laughs> All right, Vio. He's looking. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's close to your K. As you got a C and a K. All right, what's the, what's the C? Nope. Help help him out. What's the C, guys? Awesome. All right, what's what's the K? <laughs> Knowledge. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, you got a week to fit in that brain. So find a spot for it. All right. Go, T. You need a U. <laughs> Understanding, there we go. <laughs> All right, Mary Kate. Awesome. All right, Janiah. There you go, nice. All right, all right, somebody steal that piece of paper from Sumner. <laughs> all right, go for it, Sumner. <laughs> You've heard it. All right, so. Sumner, say it toward me because I can't hear you. Okay. You need to see. You see. <laughs> there you go. Nice jerk. <laughs> All right. Yep, there you go. All right, Shishi, can you give us all seven?
Is counsel. Okay, and one more F. You had, you had fear of the Lord. What's the other one? Not. <laughs> one more. Think of like Popeye. <laughs> Fortitude. There you go. Natalie. Awesome. Should we challenge Dane with We'll challenge him with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You forgot you forgot a few. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Yeah, all those good things. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about the fruits at the end. But uh all right. So who can tell me what is the sacrament of confirmation? All right, let's bring it everybody, let's bring it back together. All right, what is the sacrament of confirmation? What is the sacrament of confirmation? What are you getting next Wednesday at 6.30? Well, probably like 7, but... <laughs> no. You want to be here at 6.30 a.m.? Okay. Um, Mary-Kate, what is the sacrament of confirmation? Go ahead. So the Holy Spirit, well, yes, the Holy Spirit dwells in you and through the grace of baptism, but God's giving you something additionally, right, at confirmation? So he's giving you the Holy Spirit in another way. <laughs> so the, anybody else want to explain what is the sacrament of confirmation? Okay, what's the sacrament? Um, <laughs> okay, maybe we should start with that. What is a sacrament? <laughs> so, T, what is a sacrament? All right, Natalie, what is a sacrament? <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else want to know what a sacrament is? Yeah, I do. All right, give it to us. Anybody else? All right, so Sumner, go for it. So, so if 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 it's proof that the faith is real, or if it's proof to get closer to God, or maybe why why would we do, be doing? Why is there seven of them? And why would we be doing it in a mass setting if that was the uh, definition of a sacrament? All right, so are all the sacraments 
visible or invisible? They're visible. So you can see the sacrament, right? It's either there's a form, say the Eucharist um, is something physical, but each of them, each sacrament has a matter and form. Um, so the Eucharist would be the matter. But form is, there's a ritual for it, right? So um, there was a recent article out by, about a priest in... Arizona, I believe, who spent most of his ministry saying, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The church came out and said all those baptisms were invalid. And so everybody that got baptized by that priest has to get rebaptized. So he said, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's supposed to say, I baptize you. Right? Because there's one person doing the baptism. Who's the one person baptizing? God, Christ. And the, yes. And, and the priest is the vessel in which God is acting to perform that ba- baptism. So um, there's the particular form that the church has to follow. And if we deviate from that, then we're not actually performing the sacrament anymore. We're just doing our own thing willy-nilly. Um, there's matter. So in the case of the sacrament of confirmation, what would be the, the matter? So in the Eucharist, it's the host, the blessed sacrament, um, needing bread and wine. What would it be for the sacrament of confirmation? Good. The oil. Awesome. And who is going to be... Um, acting in the person of Christ at your confirmation. Yes. The archbishop, correct. Awesome. So he um, will be the one conferring upon you the sacrament of confirmation. So the sacrament, um, based, I'll read the Baltimore Catechism, um, which is the catechism that came before the really big, thick one. Um, So the catechism defines a sacrament as an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. So it's an outward sign, so it's a visible sign. Um, So all the sacraments are done visibly, publicly, um, except for confession. Um, But that's still... um, you know, two people involved and stuff like that. Um, no more than two, unless you need an interpreter. Um, and the instituted by Christ. So all seven of the sacraments were instituted by Christ, right? So we can go into sacred scripture and we can see all the instances in which Christ performed one of these sacraments or one of these sacraments took place in the case of Uh, Pentecost, which is what we would say is the Holy Spirit, but even that God is sending the Holy Spirit. So um, either Christ is acting or God is acting, um, but he is giving something to his people, um, and that something is grace. And so in each sacrament, do we receive the same exact thing? No. Otherwise, we just have one sacrament. We have seven sacraments. Should we have another quiz? (laughs) All right, you're tired of quizzes. All right, so uh, Christ uh, gave to us seven sacraments, and each of these sacraments confers upon us as um, a particular grace. So I liken it to... um, Pause. I was stuck on the image of golf and how you need different golf clubs to do different things, but, you know, I'll play golf. So I I was thinking, okay. All right, so we'll start start with the golfing analogy, and then we'll go to the coloring analogy. (laughs) Yeah, so um, the golfing analogy is that you could, you know, on an 18-hole, there's 18 holes, um, and you could have one golf club, and you could play the whole thing with one golf club. But instead, you're given 14 golf clubs, and each club has a specific purpose and intention to it. Um, so instead of a one, 
a one club to do it all. Um, golfers decided that they needed 14 for specializing. So that's kind of the idea here. Instead of God just saying, here's one sacrament, it'll cover all the bases, He's gonna, God's giving us seven to cover very specific aspects of the Christian life, um, to give us graces to help us through the different aspects of our life. Um, so grace for marriage, grace for Eucharist, um, or priesthood, uh, grace at your, your death, uh, in, your, in that dying process, um, reconciliation, um, confirmation, baptism, uh, communion. Um, so there's gr graces for each of the different stages or phases or throughout your life, depending on if it's one you can receive daily or a once and only once. Um, and then um, the other thought I had was like, if you don't get the golf one, there was the color one, where it's like, you could just be given one color and you could paint everything in that one color but it's better you're given a variety of colors, right? So you can distinguish between the different parts of a, a painting. You know, like if you're doing one of those like color by numbers or something, and I just gave you one color, you wouldn't really know what it was, but if I gave you a bunch of colors, then you'd know what it was. That's why you need. All right, Janiya. Well, it wouldn't work for colorblind people. Like, can't she see shades? <laughs> you know there's like a thousand different types of whites out there like I only know one white so shades are pointless <laughs> what's that well yes but I can't distinguish between all the shades of white anyways um, go ahead T I'm a right-handed golfer. If I want to use one throughout an entire course? <laughs> well, I mean, it depends where I'm at in relationship to the green, right? Am I in the bunker? Am I, like, on the tee box? Am I in the trees? <laughs> Well, then how far is the tee box from the green? Is it a par five, par four, par three? <laughs> All right, I, need to, I know too much about golf. All right. Um. <laughs> okay, so can somebody define for me again what is a sacrament? Summer, what is a sacrament? Yes. A tool, kind of. Yes. Okay, so what would be the catechetical definition of a sacrament? Jacob? Hey, guys. Guys, please. Jacob, what is this? So, not really. Um, it is intended to bring you closer to God. So that would be the grace aspect, right? And then, who's doing the conferring of the grace? In place of, or in the person of God. Okay, so, all right, everybody listen. So a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ conferring grace. An out outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. So if you need to write this down, write this down. An outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace.
That is a sacrament. So each sacrament gives a particular grace. So you can get graces outside of these sacraments, but you can't get these graces except through the sacraments. So you can't get the sacrament of reconciliation except through going through the sacrament of reconciliation. Right? You can't get the Eucharist except through the sacrament of the Eucharist. Yes, yeah, so you'd be just buying bread. You'd be buying unleavened bread. You can eat unleavened bread all you want. You can buy all you want. But it's not the body of Christ, right? It has to be sacramentized. <laughs> it has to be consecrated by the priest in the form of the Mass. So a priest can't just take regular unleavened bread and then say whatever he wants and then it becomes the blessed sacrament. No, he has to do it. Th What's that? But Jesus is the one who instituted the form and the matter. So he's the one that decided this is how it's going to be. Yes. It what's that? You can eat it once per day in the setting of Mass. Unless you're sick and infirmed, which it can be brought to you. And then there's a ritual for that. Sumner? Yep. Hey guys, you guys, please listen because you probably all have similar questions and I don't want to answer this 20 times. It would not work the same way if a priest took bread, um, common bread, even if he did like the whole Mass and said all the right words, if he took that and didn't use unleavened bread, he used common bread, it would not be invalid. It would be invalid. No, I mean, you, I probably wouldn't go to coffers and just buy cartons of the uh Unleavened bread just for eating purposes. It'd be really expensive. Um, <laughs> but the point is, and it's the same thing with all these sacraments, is when Jesus Christ instituted each of these sacraments, he gave us particular matter and form. So we have to remember that each sacrament has a particular matter and form associated with it. If we start to deviate um, from the matter or the form, we are deviating from what Christ has told us to do. So we're no longer, f Christ has set rules and guidelines for each of these. And he says you have to do it according, exactly according to this, these rules. And if you don't, you're not doing what Christ taught us to do. Right? So for the Eucharist, it has to be unleavened bread. Um, and it has to be a certain alcoholic content of wine. Um, if you, what's that? Grape wine. Um, and it all has to be natural. It can't be synthetic. Uh, Sumner, good. Yep. I mean, it's, it's wine. It's fermented. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's 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 made the same way as way as regular wine. So no. You can have the cheapest wine to the most expensive wine as long as it is made from grapes and has a particular alcohol content that would consider it to be wine. Janiah. I yeah, I used I used Necco wafers. Well, no. I mean, there you have to keep in mind of like your your kid, you're playing around, um your intention is because you're kind of um enamored by by the Eucharist. Like this is something that's not really common to us, especially if you weren't Catholic. You'd be like, what the heck is going on? So there's a part of, there's, <laughs> yeah, so there's like a curiosity as a kid, and, and you're kind of imitating that curiosity, which isn't a bad thing. Um, and, it, and, and in that way, and playing with it, so like even when I was a kid and we'd use like NECA wafers, is like we learned that from when we were preparing for to receive Holy Communion, is like in class we'd practice with NECA wafers. Um, and like that wasn't disrespectful. Like we were, the intention was to prepare us um, or to imitate, but we were never actually trying to have it take the place of actual Holy Communion. We never believed that it really was the body or the blood of Christ. Um, so, yeah, it's not disrespectful unless you make it disrespectful. Go ahead, Jacob. Go ahead. Yeah. What do you, you mean in terms of a sacrament or what? Um, well, you can't. You can't you can't substitute something for a sacrament. No, as in like there's a there's the sacrament of anointing, which has a particular again form, matter, and form, and the priest only the priest can um, do that sacrament because it has a reconciliation part of it. You could baptize if they're not baptized, but you can't, a common person can't administer the sacrament of anointing. Well, I mean, God's not, even though Christ has instituted these sacraments, he's not bound by these sacraments. So he might be the lawgiver, but he can also wiggle around the law because he's the one that created the laws, right? But we, as the law-abiding citizens, it is not in our um, authority to change the law. So we might have, you know, through prayer and discernment, um, how do we adapt the laws to, um, like, when Christ is preaching, he didn't think about in 2,000 years they're going to be on iPhones and cell phones and all these things, so he didn't go about and, and include in the ten Beatitudes uh, or the eight Beatitudes, he didn't declare something about iPhones, right? Because people back then would have been like, what the heck is an iPhone, you know? <laughs> um, but we can, we can take the Beatitudes and all the other commandments that, this, that uh, Christ and the prophets and that God set forth, and we can apply them to technology, we can apply them to um, our modern day situation. Um, so we can, we're not changing the laws that Christ or God instituted, um, but we're discerning how those laws can apply and guide us in our modern um, life today. Yes, what was your second question?
So you can actually receive two Eucharists per day, provided that you are a full participant in both of those masses. Um, so you can't just go to one and then be like, all right, I'm going to show up at 830 for the second one and like get in line for communion and, and head out of there. Like enough grace has been given to you in the first sacrament um, and the first time you received. So it's not like Jesus was holding some part and you got to go back for a second time. Um, so the, the only reason why you're permitted to is if as a lay person you were um, uh, maybe if there was some need or whatever. Um, but otherwise, it was really for the priests who had to celebrate multiple masses per day. Um, but once is sufficient. So it's not, I mean, it's, a, I don't know if I'd, if it's necessarily categorized as a mortal sin, but um, if you're like going to every single mass to see, to receive communion as often as possible, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's, um, there's a lack of understanding of what's being given to you in the first time um, when you receive Holy Communion. Uh, Deacon Kirk, did you want to weigh in on anything? But given certain circumstances, all right, T. No, those are two separate sacraments. So you should go to the sacrament of reconciliation, confession uh, regularly. The church asks once a year, um, but encourages at least once per month. Yes, Sumner? Yep. All right, uh, let's have Deacon Kirk explain it, because... Because the pastor is has the responsibility uh, to basically guard and um, appropriately distribute Holy Communion. Um, so if you need to bring it to a, a sick person, um, you need to ask the pastor for permission so that he can then provide you with an additional uh, host to bring to that sick person in which you are supposed to go directly from church to that sick person. It's not church, do my errands, do this and that, and then go to the sick person. No, it's church and then the sick person. Um, if you see somebody, this is part of your defending the faith, is if you see somebody, take Holy Communion, 
and not consume it, either put it in their pocket, their purse, um, throw it away. You are one, I would encourage you, I know, or maybe you can ask, you can definitely ask one of the sacristans or ask one of the ushers or Deacon Kirk, and you can say, hey, I saw this person receive, but not actually consume the Blessed Sacrament. They put it in their purse or whatever it may be, and then um, they can then approach that person. Um, because when you are given the Eucharist at Mass, it is meant to be consumed right then and there. Um, so you consume it in front of the Eucharistic minister, in front of the priest, or you might step aside uh, now with COVID to put, uh, pull your mask down. Um, but you are supposed to receive it right then and there. So if you see somebody um, say something to an usher or to us, uh, one of the Eucharistic ministers, um, because we don't want, like, this is Jesus in, in, that, in the Blessed Sacrament. That's what we believe. Um, and so we don't want it to be, we don't want Christ to be thrown into a dumpster, um, you know, just forgotten about in a purse, in a drawer, whatever it may be. Um, so we have that duty to, out of love, out of reverence uh, for what we are receiving, um, to care for the Blessed Sacrament. Um, Janiah, last question, then we'll take a quick break. Okay, two questions. Okay, what's your second one? Yes. Does it go bad after? It is bread, so yes, it will go bad after a certain amount of time. Okay. Typically, once they've bought it, they bought it in like massive quantities and then store it in a fridge or a freezer until they and pull it out over time. Um, but yes, it has the characteristics of bread, so it will go stale over time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Yep. Yeah, um, but I mean, feel free to ask the pastor. All right, let's take a break. Uh, come back at 45. Not in 45, but at 45.
All righty, let's start. Uh, let's start it up. I don't have so much too much time. Um, I appreciate your questions and I appreciate your um, desire to learn more. Um, all right. So now that we know that a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give us grace, let's unpack that a little bit. Um, so we figured out what the outward sign is. There's matter and form, so it's something that we can see that we participate in that takes participants um, to be involved when in, instituted by Christ. So again, we can trace this to um, the, sac or the scripture. We can see where these instances occur in scripture. Um, all seven sacraments take place, and um, so that's where we got it from. Um, to give grace, so that's kind of what uh, we need to be aware of. Um, so when we are going, presenting ourselves to each of the sacraments, um, our, our job is to present ourselves um, in the form that we are in. Um, so don't be ashamed. Um, and Christ, in his um, love and mercy, is going to give us a gift. And each again, each sacrament has a different gift that we are receiving uh, from Christ. Um, and then with this gift, the, we are to use it for a particular purpose. Um, one, so it helps us uh, deepen our relationship with God as his beloved son or daughter. So it's bringing us closer to God um, and therefore unites us more firmly to Christ as his disciple um, so that... For, we know we're beloved sons and daughters, um, but he also gives us a mission um, to uh, be his disciple, a follower, and his, he gave the mission of his followers to proclaim and defend the faith. Um, and so he's given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit to help us proclaim and defend the faith through the sacrament of, of confirmation. So he doesn't just give you the gift and say, have at it, uh, see you in a few years, let me know how it goes. Um, but he remains with us. So he's giving us the Holy Spirit uh, himself to remain with us. Yes, Mary Kate. We are on the front page. Uh, what is the purpose of this sacrament? So it's like the second bolded section. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, the first part was good. It was about the Eucharist, so I can't complain about that. Um, that's what I'm going to speed through this part. Um, I mean, you guys all want to know what you, what it means, each of those seven gifts mean, right? Other than just words. So, um, I'm going to speed up till we get to that point. So, um, the Holy Spirit's going to remain with us. That's God's promise to us. We can always fall back on that promise. Whenever we're feeling um, depressed, anxious, alone, um, ostracized, um, whatever we may be, we can fall back to God and say, God, you promised that you would be here with me. Show yourself. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's his promise to us is that he will be with us. And so if God is going to be um, faithful to his promise, he will show himself to you. And so for our part, we should have, we have to have faith in that. We have to see and allow God to show himself to us. And the way that he may show himself may not be the way that we um, would expect, but ideally it'll be in a better way than we expected. Um, so sometimes if you go to a sacrament of reconciliation, like, oh man, the priest is going to rain down fire, hell, and condemnation on me because I'm done doing a terrible thing, and then instead the priest is like, remember that Christ loves you, like, here's his mercy, um, and rejoice in that. You're like, wow, that actually was a lot better. <laughs> like, I feel a lot better coming out of that, rather than fire, hell, and condemnation upon me. Um, so, the ways in which Christ presents himself to us to show that he is still with us may be different than we inspect, but it's actually usually the way we really need him to be with us. Instead of the way we expect or want, it's the way we actually need him to be with us. Um, so, the, 
the sending forth our mission as disciples is to proclaim and defend the faith. Um, and we kind of went through what takes place when you receive the sacrament. Um, but again, we'll go over this really quickly. Um, so I'm going to stand up at the um, AMBO and present every, each and every one of you um, to the Archbishop to say that you want to be confirmed. So I'll say your name and then you will stand up and you will say here or present um, to let the Archbishop know that you are indeed there and that is indeed you. Um, and then after that happens, he's going to give a homily, um, a period of reflection. Uh, Bishop Eusebio would ask you questions. I don't know if Archbishop Achen would. Um, but last year, Bishop Eusebio asked everybody, um, what does um, martyr mean? Anybody know what the word martyr means? Go ahead, Jacob. Like, what is the um, definition, like, the, I'm blanking on the, how to describe it. <laughs> okay, so the Greek word for martyr um, is translated into, there's one word for it. So you, you got it right in, sen in sense of what martyr does. Another way to say that is a martyr... Um, is witness. So they're a witness to the faith. Um, so if Archbishop asks you that, and he's like, what does martyr mean? You can say a witness. Go ahead, Keith. He might. He might. He did last year. He might ask you, like, what's your favorite, what's your favorite of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit? I don't know. We'll see what he asks. Hey, and if you don't know, you can turn to your sponsor and say, hey, what's the answer? And your sponsor better be like, here's the answer. I was disappointed. No sponsor spoke up last year. They all didn't know either. <laughs> I'm agonizing in the back. And they're all like, oh, I don't know either. So hopefully your sponsor knows. Um and okay so then um there's two ritual actions so the first is the laying on of the hands so the archbishop um either individually or in a group i don't know how he's doing it now do you know either way he's going to put his hands over you whether you're all in your seat standing or individually okay Yeah, um, so he'll, over the whole group, he'll call upon the Holy Spirit to descend upon you. So when he does this, that's what he's doing. He won't say any words verbally. He'll have some prayers leading up to that point. But when he does that, he's not, it actually says for him to not say any words. Like that is the moment for God to come down upon you all. And then the second part is you will each come up individually and be anointed with the chrism oil. Um so this symbolizes the act of sealing, um, so consecration. So you've been set aside for a particular mission. You've been consecrated. That's what consecrated is, to be set aside for a particular purpose. Um, it is a sign of abundance, joy, and consecration. Uh, the smell symbolizes the sweet aroma of Christ. Um, so he will, and then the mark, and it's the mark of Christ. Um, so when he anoints you, he'll, with the oil, make the sign of the cross on your forehead. And he will say, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, and you'll say, amen. All right? And then he'll say, peace be with you. And what will you say? Okay. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Um, so he also, when you first come up to, he's going to ask you, he's not going to say anything. You're going to present yourself. So we'll go through this next week too. Um, but you're going to present yourself and you're going to say, I am, in my case, I am Jonathan Thomas Cheever and I want to be confirmed. So that is your line. Remember that. 
Write that in, don't write that in Sharpie on your hand. Just remember it. <laughs> so, your name, your saint, and that you wish to be, uh, you want to be confirmed. And then he'll say, be sealed with the Holy Spirit. You'll say, amen. He'll say, peace be with you. And you'll say, and with your spirit. I honestly, I, more than one of you will not remember this order and will forget. Um... Do not be ashamed because you will not you are not the first and you definitely are not the last person. Uh probably the first apostles were the first ones to forget at it. <laughs> probably Peter. Um so uh yes, I probably should have like printed out some stuff for you. But anyways, um all right. So the next is what's the difference between baptism and confirmation? Because you're like, well, I got the Holy Spirit at baptism, right? Um and you would be correct. But again, each sacrament, you are given a gift or grace in a par- for a particular way uh, and in a particular, uh, for a particular purpose. So at baptism, when you are baptized, you are brought in to uh, the family of God. So you, at that moment, you become that beloved son or daughter of God. Um, before that, you're kind of... Uh, no, you're still created by God, but you're not necessarily or distinctly that beloved son or daughter. Um, so at baptism, you're brought into that familial relationship with God. And so in confirmation, and so that just, so baptism opens the door to your life as a Christian. Um, so it's like walking into a toy store. Now you like get access to everything. Um, and then with confirmation, you are given the Holy Spirit, because you are given and created for a particular purpose. So broadly, it's to proclaim and defend the faith, and then that gets narrowed down into saying, say your um, openness to respond with to your vocation, priesthood, baptism, or priesthood, religious life, marriage, um, stuff like that, or any other ways you may participate in the church. Um, you can be an evangelist, um, whatever it may be. Um, so, uh, in baptism, the baptized are reborn as children of God, making them members of the church and giving them access to the sacramental life within the church through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, in confirmation, the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit endows them with special strength so that they are more strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith, both by word and by deed, as true witnesses of Christ. So, in confirmation, you may also be given the strength to receive martyrdom. Don't be surprised if God asks you to do that. Um, So, on to the next back page. Uh, What is the role of a sponsor? So, you all have chosen sponsors, and they have all acquiesced and said yes. And so a sponsor is a baptized and confirmed Catholic who will be a role model and a support in the Christian life. Um, It is appropriate that this one be one of the baptismal godparents, if possible. Um, So we all have role models in life. If you're in sports, you you have a sports role model. Um, Maybe there's a political figure that you're a role model. whatever it may be. Um, we all have role models. We all inspire to be like somebody or be as good as somebody or better than somebody. Um, but they kind of set, you know, give us a, a guiding path. Um, if I want to become, so in this case, we have our sponsor um, who's going to help us, but also in a way we have our um, saint that you've also chosen. That's also going to be your, your role model. Um, so your sponsor is kind of that earthly, on-earth role model. So you have that person there to call at any hour of the day. Yes, any hour of the day. Um, and you ready for that, Molly? Any hour of the day, they're going to be calling you because you're their sponsor. <laughs> um, and they're going to support you and help you throughout what does it look like um, to proclaim and defend the faith. So when you're, you're stuck... Remember that you have a sponsor, and you can go to that sponsor. Um, and then you have your confirmation saints. Uh, saint or biblical character hero, uh, somebody who actually 
lived um, and is still living in relationship with God in heaven. Um, they are your protector and guide. So again, uh, we look at the, all the saints that we chose um, and we try and model our life after them so we can see the ways in which they were only Mary was born a saint. Everybody else had to work at it. So um, if you chose Mary, that's awesome. Um, but know that she was born a saint. Everybody else had to struggle to get there, even St. Joseph. Um, so we can see how those saints struggled in their life um, to respond to God's call. And eventually when they did, how glorious... Um, not without suffering, but how glorious and joyful their life ultimately was, and now they're in heaven with God. So we want to mirror uh, their life and our life, so to work through those sufferings, to draw closer to God, um, and ultimately our joy will be heaven. Um, so seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Uh, they belong in the fullness of Christ, son of David. So... Um, they were even foretold in the Old Testament. You'll see in Isaiah there. Um, they complete and perfect the virtues of those who receive them. Um, they make the faithful docile and readily obeying the div divine inspirations. So they are what enable us. Um, so God is equipping us to go out and do what he asks us to do. Um, it would not be great of God to say, hey, go do this. And you're like, well, how do I do that? And he's like, I don't know, figure it out. <laughs> Come back in a few years, let me know how it goes. Peace. <laughs> now he's like, all right, um, let me get you everything you need. Let me, let's pack your bags. Let's give you all the tools um, to go out and do complete the mission. Yes, T. Okay. Um, so first one, blank is principally revering God with filial affection paying worship and duty to God, paying due duty to all men on account of their relationship to God, and honoring the saints and not just contradicting Scripture. The Latin word pietas denotes um, the reverence that we give to our Father and to our country, since God is the Father of all. The worship of God is also called piety. I gave you that first one. So, <laughs> first one's piety. Um, so, right relationship with God is basically when... We are turning away from God when we're no longer in relationship with him. We can be like, God, I need your help. Let's bring that piety back into, back into it. Um, so, and then we are called to uh, worship him then in the way that he has set forth. So through the sacraments, through participation in the mass, um, and all those other things. So it's that, giving that right reverence to God. Um, so we don't get a we might be able to um, say, I want to go out to the woods and into nature and give reverence to God there. Great, I do that. But he also, God also instituted the Mass and the Church and all the other different ways to give a, him uh, due reverence. Um, so again, if you're mad, take it up with God that you have to go to Mass on every Sunday because he's the one that made us do that. But it's for our good, so remember that. Um, blank is penetrating insight into the very heart of things, especially those higher truths that are necessary for our eternal salvation, and affect the ability to see God. Yes. Awesome. Good. Um, so understanding is we are able to see why God does what he does. Um, so if you, don't, if you don't know why, ask God for understanding, and then he's going to help you. And then you're going to be like, oh, that makes sense. All right, I'll go do that now. Or you'll be like, no, oh, that makes sense. I'm not going to do that. You should go do that, though. Um, blank denotes a firmness of mind in doing good and in avoiding evil, particularly when it is difficult or dangerous to do so. And the confidence to overcome all obstacles, even deadly ones, by virtue of assurance of everlasting life. Go ahead, Jacob. Fortitude. So, when you've received understanding, and God's like, yeah, this is what I want you to do it. And you're like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. You can be like, well, God told me, so let's pray for some fortitude so I can go do it. 
So fortitude is the strength to go out and do whatever the God has asked you to do. Um, four, blank is in this context filial or chaste fear, whereby we revere God and avoid separating ourselves from him as opposed to servile fear, whereby we fear punishment. Natalie. Fear the Lord. Good job. So, um, the difference it's showing is servile fear is I am going to do something because I fear being punished if I don't do it. No. So we are not, when we talk about fear of the Lord, we're not talking about I'm afraid that God's going to punish me because I don't do something. We're talking about the filial fear or the fear of basically letting letting God down, the fear of disappointing God, the fear of um, harming the relationship that you have with God, right? So, you, so instead, so that you can see in that, that's motivated by love, um, not fear of punishment. Because out of love, uh, you don't want to lose that relationship with him. Um, so if it's for the good of the relationship, you will go and do it. Um, so it's kind of the fear of Hurt, harming the relationship you have with God. Um, blank is both the knowledge and judgment, knowledge of and judgment about divine things, and the ability to judge and direct human affairs according to divine truth. So this is in relationship to earthly to heavenly. So that relationship is what we're looking at versus just earth to earth. We're looking at earth to heaven. Good. Wisdom. So again, if you don't understand the things of, you know highfalutin theological things, pray for wisdom so you can understand the divine things. Uh, blank allows a man to be directed by God in matters necessary for his salvation. Jasper. Um, no. What? Yeah, there you go. And knowledge. Yes, you can. Good job. Um, so, in those two, uh, the distinction is the relationship between you with God, um, to know right from wrong in your relationship with God. So we talk about discernment a lot. Um, and being able to, that counsel, um, being able to discern... Um, you know, what is indeed God's will and what is not his will, and then therefore doing what is his will. And then knowledge, judging matters of faith and right action. So that's kind of that earthly deal of like, what's the, you know, virtue? What's the virtuous act in this um, situation? What's the viceful action? Um, so you can make that discernment. There are more on the day-to-day -day, uh, level there. So um, with these seven, uh, your homework for the next week is to, um, you know, look at them every day. Uh, pray that you may be open uh, to receive each of these gifts and then put them into practice, which is really easy to do because if you pray for it, God will make it happen. Um, there's always that saying of like, oh, God, help me to be patient. So what's he going to do? Test your patience. <laughs> right? So, um, because he wants to help you develop that. He's not just going to give it to you, and then you're like, great, I have it, but I don't ever have to use it. No, he's going to make you use it. So, um, pray that your hearts, uh, your, your whole being may be open to receive these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, if you need to go to confession, Father will be around this Saturday. Um, to help you even more purely receive these gifts. Um, but again, uh, let's see. Uh, you can read the last couple there. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can ask me after class since we're kind of out of time. Sumner, do you have? Okay. Yes.
It is, but you are all worth it. And I... <laughs> are you including yourself? <laughs> um, yes. I, I've made all these. Dana's made the other ones. Um, but as well, pray for each other. This next, uh, pray for each other. Uh, pray for all those other parishes, all the other. Hey, everybody, listen up for just one more minute, please. Um, so pray for each other. Pray for all those who out throughout this diocese, this world, who are receiving or preparing to receive the sacrament of confirmation. Uh, I know there's another parish that's getting their students getting confirmed tonight. Uh, they actually probably are confirmed already. Um, so pray for each other. Um, know that Dane, Deacon Kirk, Father, myself, we're all praying for you. Um, and we are looking forward to next Wednesday. So let us close with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a great night. And we'll see you next Wednesday at what time? 5.45. Next Wednesday. Be here or don't be confirmed. <laughs> Reverence is our